Hello everyone, good evening. We are live from the Inspire to Learn COVID-19 virtual school. It is time for our Inspire to Learn community quiz. We are back on the Thursday evening with Quizmaster McBean. Hello, Quizmaster McBean. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Like quiz. It's wonderful to see you. This is our third community quiz, Mr. McBean. Would you believe it? That's amazing. And uh, we've already got some people saying hello. We'd love to know who's here and playing along this evening. The Stentifords are here. Hello, Stentiford family. We trust you've had a great St. George's Day. And uh, welcome to our fun evening, our community quiz night. Uh, who else is here this evening? Do say hello if you're watching. Have you had a good day, Mr. McBean? Oh, well, a very good day. Thank you, Mr. Spracklin. A very busy day. Uh, I've done lot, I've actually done quite a bit of schoolwork. Set up all my bits for next week on um, the uh, learning programme. Went yeah. for a walk in the morning too, which was nice. Lovely sunny day. Uh, the Hopkins are here. Scarlett's watching. Hello, Scarlett. Hey, Scarlett. Now, just a reminder for everyone on the format this evening, you don't need any specific technology to take part. All you need is a very handy pen and a piece of paper or a pencil and a piece of paper. Um, and what we're going to do, I'll tell you what, let's quiz Master McBean tell us what we're going to do. Well, we've got 30 questions for the children and 30 questions for the grown-ups. And we're going to ask 10 questions in each round. So there'll be three rounds of 10 questions. Mr. Spracklin will ask a question for the children and then I'll ask one for the parents and then for the children and then for the parents. We'll do that up to 10 and then we'll stop and we'll we'll mark the answers and you can see how well you got on and you can ping us your marks if you like. Uh, see how well you got on. I know people have been trying to, um, we've had competitions going on between children and parents who can get the biggest score. I think the children are winning, Mr. Spracklin. I think the children have been winning to date, but we might see a turn in the tide tonight. Who knows? We might. We'll Actually, my mum, who's joining in, I don't know if she's, hopefully she's there. Hi, mum, if you are. Um, she didn't do very well last week. She said it was too difficult. So I, I'm trying to, maybe this is a little bit easier this week. Although having just looked Ooh. at the first few questions, maybe it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. We've, we've got hello from Rosa, who says hello to Mr. Spracklin and hello, Mr. McBee. Hi, Rosa. She's sun there and a rainbow uh the bucks say that team buck are ready it's like fighting it's talk there. hello to the bakers who are watching and say hi to everyone uh good evening all from charlie wales and family hi charlie great that you're able to join us this evening uh why not if you're on facebook uh, why not share this now if you've got it open share it to your wall we might be able to get some more families taking part i can see already that we've got 15 families joining us which if, if it's to me as a hall full of people, if we've got 15 families here, that's great. But just before we get started, if you want to, why not share it to your wall and see if we can get some more people playing. We've got the Davis family saying hi, everybody. Now, as we play the quiz, we don't want anyone to put any answers in the comment box, do we, Mr. McBean? We don't. Now, that could give it away, couldn't it? We, um, uh, we'll, we'll tell you what the answers are later. We are. And we're happy to take challenges because we had a few challenges last week where uh, we, we had did. to go and we check did. The answers. Uh, and with Yorkshire and Worcestershire. Well. Question with Yorkshire was an interesting one, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was. But um, I think we're just about ready for round one. So it's now time to grab your piece of papers, uh, pieces of paper even. Grab your pieces of paper, grab your pens and pencils, settle down, uh, because right now we've got the first 10 questions for the uh, children and first 10 questions for the adults coming <laughs> So round one, question number one for the children. What is the name of the toy cowboy in Toy Story? That is, what is the name of the toy cowboy in Toy Story? Question number one for the for the oldies. Fletcher is a relatively common English name. But what did a Fletcher traditionally make? Fletcher is a relatively common English name. But what did a Fletcher traditionally make? Question number two for the children. 
What is the color of an emerald? That is, what is the color of an emerald? Question number two. Who started the Boy Scout movement in 1907? Who started the Boy Scout movement in 1907? Question number three for the children. What is the name of the fairy in Peter Pan? What is the name of the fairy in Peter Pan? My number three. In what year did King John sign the Magna Carta? Was it 1215, 1255, 1315 or 1355? In what year did King John sign the Magna Carta? Was it 1215, 1255, 1315 or 1355? Oh, good question. Question number four for the children. If you freeze water, what do you get? That's if you freeze water, what do you get? Number four, which is the largest of the world's flatfish? Which is the largest of the world's flatfish? Question number five for the children. What colours are the stars on the American flag? What colour are the stars on the American flag? My number five. Who wrote The Origin of the Species? Who wrote The Origin of the Species? Question number six for the children. Which Disney movie is Elsa in? Well, which film did she first star in? Which Disney film did Elsa first star in? Number six for the oldies. What type of animal is a copperhead? What type of animal is a copperhead? Question number seven for the children. According to the Dr. Zeus book, who stole Christmas? According to the Dr. Zeus book, who stole Christmas? That's question number seven for the children. My number seven. What freshwater fish is also the name of an early infantry weapon? What freshwater fish is also the name of an early infantry weapon? Question number eight for the children. What type of fish is Nemo. That's what type of fish is Nemo? My number eight. Which mythical beauty gave Theseus a sword and a ball of string to help him slay the Minotaur, only to be left behind on an island after he'd promised to take her back to Athens? Say that all again. Which mythical beauty gave Theseus a sword and a ball of string to help him slay the Minotaur, only to be left behind on an island after he promised to take her back to Athens? Question number nine for the children. On which day do some children dress up and go trick-or-treating? That's on which day do some children dress up and go trick-or-treating? My number nine. The course of true love never did run smooth is a quote from Act One of which Shakespeare play? The course of true, no true love never did run smooth is a quote from Act One of which Shakespeare play? And the final question in this round for the children is what is a doe? What is a doe? And my final question and my favourite question for this round is what canal is an ancient Greek god backwards? What canal is an ancient Greek god backwards? 
Oh, good question. Now we've had a request to go back to question four and five again for the children, so I'll bring those up. Question four for the children was, if you freeze water, what do you get? That is, if you freeze water, what do you get? And question five for the children was, what colours are the stars on the American flag? That are that is what are the color what sorry what colors are the stars on the American flag? Let us know in the comment box how you feeling. Do you feel confident? How do you think you got on? Uh, the mystery dies say we feel okay we'll have to see how you get on with the answers how else are people feeling uh the devils say they feel pretty good uh the bucks say can you repeat question eight can you repeat your question eight mr mcbean like that let's give me a moment to find it question eight One minute. Let's scroll down yes it's a bit of a long-winded question eight it's basically which mythical beauty gave Theseus a sword and a ball of string to help him slay the Minotaur, only to be left behind by Theseus later on on an island? And Jacob should know that one. <laughs> that's the one. That's one for the adults that the children should. Oh yes, Jacob, shh, don't tell him. <laughs> Isla and Jack are feeling confident. Uh, the Brad, uh, the Davises say Bradley's winning hands down in their house. So we'll have to wait and see for the answers. Right then, let's see the answers to round number one. We're going to start with the children. Uh, the first question was, what is the name of the toy cowboy in Toy Story? And the answer is Woody. The answer to question one for the children is Woody. My number one, Fletcher is a relatively common English name. What did a, fr a Fletcher traditionally make? The answer is arrows. A Fletcher made arrows. Question number two for the children was, what is the colour of an emerald? And the answer, of course, is green. The answer to question number two is green. Number two, who started the Boy Scout movement in 1907? Lord Baden-Powell. Lord Baden-Powell. Ah, oh, Lord Baden-Powell. Do you know, in Borough Gardens, there's a sundial that was laid by Lord Baden-Powell, Mr. McBean. Hmm, I didn't know that. Yeah, up by the tennis courts. It's got his uh, plaque on there. Uh, number three, what is the name of the fairy, to, fairy in Peter Pan? The answer to question number three for the children is Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell is the answer to question number three. My number three, in which year did King John sign the Magna Carta? You had some choices, but the right one would have been 1215. 1215. If you freeze water, question number four, what do you get, children? You get ice. Ice, ice, baby. Number four, which is the world's largest flatfish the answer halibut a halibut can reach four meters long that's 13 foot and can weigh 300 kilograms that's a pretty that's 160 amazing. pounds that's a lot of fish and chips that's a lot of what, fish and chips what color are the stars on the american flag question number five for the children the answer is white white is the answer to question number five for the children my number five, who wrote The Origin of the Species? The answer, of course, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin is the answer. Question number six for the children. Which Disney movie is Elsa in? Or which did she star in first? Because we've got Frozen is the answer. Of course, you could have Frozen 2 as well. Now, Frozen 1 or Frozen 2 is the answer to question number six. My number six, what kind of animal is a copperhead? A copperhead is a snake. Oh, good answer. Question. question number seven for the children. According to the Dr. Zeus book, who stole Christmas? 
And the answer is the Grinch. The Grinch stole Christmas. Answer to number seven for the children. Number seven, what freshwater fish is also the name of an early infantry weapon? The answer, pike. Pike. Question number eight, what type of fish is Nemo? The answer is a clownfish. A clownfish is the answer to question number eight. My number eight, which mythical beauty gave Theseus a sword and a ball of string to help him escape from the Minotaur, only to be left behind by Theseus on an island? The answer is Ariadne. Ariadne. Question number nine for the children. On which day do some children dress up and go trick-or-treating? The answer is Halloween. Halloween is the answer to number nine. My number nine, the course of true love never did run smooth, is a quote from Act One of Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. More Midsummer Night's Dream. Question number 10, the final question in this round for the children. What is a doe? A doe is a female deer. The answer is a female deer. And my number 10, what canal is an ancient Greek god backwards? You got that one, Mr. Spracklin? No, I didn't. The answer is the Suez Canal, which is oh, Zeus. Zeus yeah. backwards, Suez forwards. Very good question. Well done, everyone. We'd love to know how you got in the comment. We would love to know how you got on in the comment box. Did the children win? Did the adult win? What score did you get out of 10? Did you get lots of right answers? Or did you get a few wrong? We'd love to know. Right, the Wales family say they're pretty sure the kids are currently winning. That was before the answers came up. We'll have to see whether they are in a second. Uh, Arlo and Ro knew the answer question two for the adults, Mr. McBean. So that was the Lord Baden Powell question. Arlo and Ro knew that one. Well done. Uh, the Wales family were correct on their predictions in that the children have currently got nine out of ten and the adults got one out of ten. So a little bit of catching up there to do. Uh, Scarlett got nine out of ten. Holly got nine. Sorry, Holly got ten without help. Let's not ask what I got, Mum says, I think. Uh, Mrs. Howe got six out of ten. Well done, Mrs. Howe. Good to see you playing along this evening. Uh, Rosa got ten and Daddy got seven. So the children are winning in that house as well. Uh, um, the children got ten, uh, but the adults only got five. Lots of fish questions for the Stentifers. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> She's done well there, Grant. <laughs> right. One out of ten for the children. We, we want to know what the adults got in the Stentford's house with all those fishy questions. Uh, kids ten, adults five with Isla's help. So the uh, adults got some help there in the uh, Boston household. Uh, kids one in the Buck family, eight to five. Uh, Bradley definitely won in the Davis household. Eight versus one. Lots of fantastic answers there. I've got my family here, uh, Mr. Splack, and we have the kids scored 10 out of 10. Very oh. good. Uh, the adults, the adult scoring five out of 10. Not so good. Oh. The kids also scored five out of 10 on the adults' questions. So <laughs> they're definitely ahead on that we one. I don't know if they were the same five or they were different five, but there we go. Yeah. Right then, yeah, moving know. on to round number two. Here we go. <laughs> We've got our next round of questions. Question number 11 for the children. How many days are there in a non-leap year? That is, how many days are there in a non-leap year? My question 11. In which year were East and West Germany unified? In which year were East and West Germany unified? Question number 12 for the children. What is a brontosaurus? That is, what is a brontosaurus? And my 12, on what part of a plant 
do you generally find the stomata? On what part of a plant do you generally find the stomata? Number 13 for the children. What is a group of lions called? What is a collective group of lions called? That's question 13 for the children. 13 for the oldies. Was the first postage stamp, presumably in this country this is actually, was the first postage stamp introduced in 1640, 1740 or 1840? Was the first postage stamp introduced in 1640, 1740 or 1840? Question number 14 for the children. What kind of animal was Abu in Aladdin? That's question 14 for the children. What kind of animal was Abu in Aladdin? Number 14. What British bird spits an oily liquid at anyone or anything approaching its nest? What British bird spits <coughs> an oily liquid at anyone or anything approaching its nest. Question number 15 for the children. In a nursery rhyme, who sat on a wall before having a great fall? That's in the nursery rhyme, who sat on a wall before having a great fall? 15. What cosmological theory did George Lemaitre first put forward in 1931? What cosmological theory did George Lemaitre first put forward in 1931? Uh, question number 16. On a farm, what is a kid? That is, on a farm, what is a kid? Number 16, a group of geese on the ground is called a gaggle. But what do we call a group of geese in flight, usually in a characteristic V shape? A group of geese on the ground is called a gaggle. But what do we call a group of geese in flight, usually in a characteristic V shape? Number 17 for the children. Can you name Batman's crime-fighting partner? That's question number 17. Can you name Batman's crime-fighting partner? Number 17. Where might you find a stoop and a pix? Where might you find a stoop and a pix? Question number 18 for the children. How many sides does a pentagon have? That is, how many sides does a pentagon have? Question number 18 for the children. My number 18. What piece of equipment was designed by Sir Humphrey Davy in 1815 to improve the safety of miners in British coal mines? What piece of equipment was designed by Sir Humphrey Davy in 1815 to improve the safety of miners in British coal mines? Question number 19, the penultimate question in this round for the children. Which planet in our solar system is known for having rings? That's which planet in our solar system is known for having rings? My number 19, which well-known spring and summer visitor has the scientific name Cuculus Canarus? Which well-known spring summer visitor has the scientific name Cuculus Canarus? And the final question in this round for the children, what force causes things to fall when you drop them? That's what force causes things to fall when you drop them? My final question for the oldies. If an insect is apterous, what does it not have? 
if an insect is said to be apterous, what does it not have? We've had a request for a repeated question two for the children, which I assume is question 12. And that is, what is a brontosaurus? Question 12 for the children is, what is a brontosaurus? Let us know how you're feeling about that round. Are you feeling happy? <laughs> or are you feeling a bit worried? <laughs> We'd love to know. feeling let's go through oh here we go we're feeling a bit more confident now um we've got dad's help the baker's day <laughs> uh the adults are feeling not happy the kids are feeling okay from the mystery dyers uh mrs buck says that was a tough adult round uh who else says uh, mrs house says they were hard uh, let's go through the answers and see what people got. Children are confident, adults not so much in the Bullock household. Seems to be a general theme there, Mr. McBean. Uh, wow. Let's go through the answers. How many days are there in a non-leap year for the children? Question number 11. The answer is 365. My question, in which year were East and West Germany unified? The answer is 1990. Question number 12 for the children. What is a brontosaurus? A brontosaurus is a dinosaur. Dinosaur is the answer to question number 12 for the children. My number 12. On what part of a plant do you generally find the stomata? You find the stomata on the leaves, that little hole on the underside of the leaves but leaves is the answer so leaves is the answer to that one uh the next question for the children is question number 13 what is a group of lions called a group of lions is called a pride a pride is the answer to question number 13 for the children my number 13 the first postage stamp was introduced in 1840 the answer is 1840 1840 is the answer to mr mcbean's question the next question for the children was question number 14 what kind of animal was abu in aladdin abu was a monkey a monkey is the answer to question number 14 number 14 for the oldies what British bird spits an oily liquid at anyone or anything approaching its nest? The answer, fulmar. A fulmar, F-U-L-M-A-R, fulmar. Question number 15 for the children. In the nursery rhyme, who sat on a wall before having a great fall? The answer is Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty is the answer to question number 15. And my 15, what cosmological theory did Georges Lemaitre first put forward in 1931? What theory? Well, the Big Bang Theory. The answer, Big the Big Bang. Bang Theory. Question number 16, on the farm, what is a kid? The answer is a baby goat. Question 16, the answer for the children is a baby goat. 16. A group of geese on the ground is known as a gaggle of geese, but in the sky when they're flying, generally in a V shape, that is known as a skein, which is spelt S K E I N, skein. Number 17 for the children. Can you name Batman's crime fighting partner? The answer is Robin. Robin is the answer to question number 17. My number 17, where might you find a stoop and a pix? 
The answer is at a church, a stoop as a little basin often outside the front door containing water, holy water. And a pix is a box that's used for the consecrated bread. So the answer to number 17 is at a church. Number 18. How many sides does a pentagon have? A pentagon has five sides. The answer to number 18 is five. My number 18. What piece of equipment was designed by Sir Humphrey Davy in 1815 to improve the safety of British coal miners? The answer is a lamp. It was called a Davy lamp. So the answer is a lamp. It was named after him, a Davy lamp. The penultimate question for the children in this round is, which planet in our solar system is known for having rings? That is number 19, which planet in our solar system is known for having rings? The answer is Saturn. Saturn is the answer to question 19. My 19, which well-known spring summer visitor has the scientific name Cuculus Canarus? The answer, the cuckoo. Ah, uh, cuckoo. And finally, question 20 for the children. What force causes things to fall when you drop them? The answer is gravity. Gravity is the answer to question number 20 for the children. And my final question for this round, if an insect is apterous, what does it not have? If it's apterous, it does not have wings. So that completes the answers to round number two. Let us know how you got on. <laughs> Do we get lots of people getting the answers right? Were the adults a bit like this again, maybe? Hope we can give everyone a round of applause for all their work so far. Let's see those scores come in. It's that time again to see how everyone's getting on. Oh, here we go. We've got some scores in. Scores on the doors came in through there, Mr. McBean. How did they get on in your house? The kids got. Nine out of ten, and the adult, I think that says two. Oh, two on that one. <laughs> that was a round. Round. Uh, in the Wales family, the kids got seven out of ten. Unfortunately, the dog just ran off with the adult score sheet. <laughs> oh, conveniently, maybe. <laughs> a bit of uh, gameplay going on there, I think, with a bit of uh, insider dog uh, meddling, I think. Uh, the Bostons, the kids got nine. And the adults got three. Um, Mummy had a nightmare round for the Bucks. Uh, kids got one with eight versus one um, in the Buck family. Well done, the Bucks. Uh, Mrs. Howe got five out of ten. Uh, Holly got ten again with some help this time. And Mummy and Daddy only got four. Uh, in the Boston household, the kids got nine. The adults got three. Uh, oh, we've got the mystery dyers asking, what was the answer to the last question for the adults? They, an apterous insect does not have wings. So the answer is wings. Does not have wings. Uh, 10 out of 10 for the children in the Stentiford house. Well done, Stentiford. Mm -hmm. Rosa got nine and Daddy, uh, Daddy got three on the university challenge round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was tricky. It was tricky. <laughs> Olive got nine, mum got one, children got nine, that's in the Hawking family. Uh, children got nine and the adults got three in the mystery dice. I think three was a, a, a good Very score. Good score. Yeah. Good I, think, score. I think it was a good round. Right, it's time, almost time for round, our final round, Mr. McBean. Our final round. Round number three coming up. Okay, question number 21 for the children. In which capital city of Europe 
would you find the Eiffel Tower? That is question number 21 for the children. In which capital city of Europe would you find the Eiffel Tower? 21 for the oldies. What year was the Battle of Trafalgar? What year was the Battle of Trafalgar? Question 22 for the children. A scientist who studies rocks is called a what? That is 22 for the children. A scientist who studies rocks is called a what? 22 for me. Which of these came first in the Mesozoic era? Cretaceous, Jurassic or Triassic? Which of these three came first in the Mesozoic era, Cretaceous, Jurassic, or Triassic? That's another one I think many of the children will know. Question 23, how many continents are there in the world, children? Question number 23 for the children, how many continents are there in the world? My number 23, very guessable. In cricket, what is an umpire signalling if he or she extends both arms out to the sides. In cricket, what is an umpire signalling if he or she extends both arms out to the sides? I think you should give a demonstration, Mr. McBean. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Next question for the children. Question number 24 for the children. Two of the planets in our solar system begin with the letter M. Can you name them? That's two of the planets in our solar system begin with the letter M. Can you name them both? 24. Which useful car part was Mary Anderson given the patent for? Which useful car part was Mary Anderson given the patent for? Question number 25 for the children. How many bones do sharks have? That's question number 25 for the children. How many bones do sharks have? And my 25. Whose lack of real talent but nonetheless success at the ski jump caused the qualifying rules to be increased after the 1982 Winter Olympics in Calgary. Whose lack of real talent but nonetheless success at the ski jump caused the qualifying rules to be increased after the 1982 Winter Olympics in Calgary. Uh, question number 26. Can you name the closest star to Earth? That's 26 for the children. Can you name the closest star to Earth? Number six. In Roman numerals, what number does the letter capital L mean? What number is it? In Roman numerals, what number does the letter capital L mean? Question number 27 for the children. Another Olympic question. In what country were the original Olympic Games first held over 2,000 years ago? That is, in what country were the original Olympic Games first held over 2,000 years ago? 27. Who lives at 221B Baker Street? Who lives at 221B Baker Street? Question number 28 for the children. Who invented the telephone? 28 for the children. Who invented the telephone? 28 for the oldies. A bowlin, a sheet bend, a clove hitch are all types of what? A bowlin, a sheet bend and a clove hitch are all types of what? 
question 29 for the children our penultimate question of the whole quiz for the children who painted the mona lisa that is who painted the mona lisa my 29 how many living rhinoceros species are there how many different species are there of rhinoceros i don't expect you to name them all but how many different species do you think they are and the final question for the children which famous which famous ocean liner sank on her first voyage in 1912 which famous ocean liner sank on her first voyage in 1912 that's the final question for the children and my final question many scottish place names include the word strath but what does the word strath mean many scottish place names include the word strath what does the word strath mean? Let us know how you're feeling. Do you feel confident? Now's the time to find out. Let's see if we've got any responses. How are people feeling at the end of this round? The final round in today's quiz. How do you think? How do you think that round went, Mr. Mabin? Do you reckon that was a tough round? I think it was tough, but I don't think it was quite as tough as the middle one. No, I think it was a bit easier than the middle a little one. Bit easier. I think slightly higher scores for that one. Uh, the Bucks are saying, Mrs. Buck's saying that it was better than round two. Yeah. Put a message up there. Uh, what does the centre say? Centre's not said anything that one. Right, I think we're uh, ready. Oh, quite a tricky one, the Bakers say. Oh, let's wait and see. How we're feeling it after we have the answers. Oh, a few nervous faces in the Bullock family. Uh, the kids have been knocked down a peg or two there, apparently. <laughs> There's quite a bit, a bit of satisfaction in that message, I think. <laughs> uh, we'll wait and see, though, Steve. Don't don't be overconfident. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, knocked down, not sewn yet. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> right then, let's see, shall we? Let's see the answers to those uh, questions. Our final round, Mr. McBean. Uh, question number, let's bring these up, shall we? Question number 21 we're looking for for the children. Oh, if my screen hadn't frozen, that would be helpful. Here we go. Question number 21. Here we go. The next round of answers. For the children, in which capital city of Europe would you find the Eiffel Tower? And the answer is Paris. Paris is the answer to question number 21 for the children. 21. What year was the Battle of Trafalgar? The answer, 1805. Battle of Trafalgar, 1805. Question 22 for the children. A scientist who studies rocks is called a what? The answer is a geologist. A geologist is the answer to question number 22. My 22, which of these came first in the Mesozoic era? Cretaceous, Jurassic or Triassic? They're actually in that order. So the answer is Cretaceous, which is between 50 and 140 million years ago. Cretaceous. Number 23 for the children. How many continents are there in the world? The answer is seven. There are seven continents in the world. In cricket, what is the umpire signalling if he or she extends her arms both out to the side? The answer, a wide. A wide. A wide. Uh, question number 24 for the children. 
Two of the planets in our solar system begin with the letter M. Can you name them both? The answers are Mars and Mercury. Mars and Mercury. Which useful car part was Mary Anderson given the patent for? The answer, windscreen wipers. Windscreen wipers. Number 25, how many bones does a shark have? Bit of a trick question here. The answer is zero. A shark doesn't have any bones. Zero is the answer to question number 25. My 25, whose lack of real talent but nonetheless success at ski jumping caused the qualifying rules to be increased after the 1982 Winter Olympics in Calgary? The answer, Eddie Edwards. Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Uh, next question for the children. Uh, again, an Olympic question. Oh, no, it's not. 26 first. Question number 26. Can you name the closest star to Earth? Can you name the closest star to Earth? The answer is the sun. The sun is the closest star to Earth. Number 26. In Roman numerals, what does the letter capital L mean? The answer 50. 50. Question number 27. In what country were the original Olympic Games first held over 2,000 years ago? The answer is Greece. Greece is the answer to question number 27 for the children. Who lives at 221B Baker Street? The fictional character Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Sherlock Holmes. Same street as Madame Two Swords. Uh, question number 28 for the children. Who invented the telephone? Who invented the telephone? The answer is Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Graham Bell is the answer to question number 28. 28. A bowling, a sheet bend, and a clove hitch are all types of not. As in K-N-O-T, they're all knots. Uh, question number 29, who painted the Mona Lisa? That's who painted the Mona Lisa. The answer is Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. 29, how many living, different living species of rhinoceros are there? The answer is five. And they are Indian, Javan, Sumatran. Black rhinos and white rhinos. The final question of our whole quiz for the children, question number 30 is, which famous ocean liner sank on her first voyage in 1912? And the answer is the Titanic. The Titanic is the answer to question number 30 for the children. And the final Adults question is how many Scottish place names, sorry, many Scottish place names include the word strath? What does the word strath mean? The answer, valley. A strath is a valley. Oh, brilliant. Thank you everyone for following those answers. We'd love to know how you got on. What was your overall score? How did you get on in that round? Do you think this quiz was easier than last week? Give us your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> So the Wales family's prediction did come true. It said, uh, they say, yes, we got three and Charlie only got one and a half. It's, well, I didn't say we only got, but it said Charlie got one and a half. Whoop, whoop. I think there's a bit of competitive uh, parents <laughs> going on there. Uh, the Howell, Mrs. Howell got seven out of ten. Uh, cool. Hoskins said they didn't do very well in that round. Holly got nine. 
uh, with a little help again. Adults got seven. Uh, at the end of the round in the Mystery Dice House, the kids got the score of six and the adults got nine. Overall, the kids got 25 and the adults got 19. So another victory for the children in the Mystery Dice House. Um, Mystery score, Dyer, both, I, believe, I believe that is three weeks in a row. Well done. Um, in the Buck family, kids won again, six to four. Uh, Rosa got six and Daddy got seven. Yay, we beat Rosa. Some parents very happy that they won that round, Mr. McBean. And then it looks like it, doesn't it? Like 80 the payback. Overall for Mrs. Howe. Um, there's, there's some confusion about the number of points that the adults got in the Mystery Dyers. Apparently it was 17, not 19. There's been a steward's inquiry. Um, the adults only got 17, apparently, um, according to, I'm not sure if that's Imogen typing that in or whether it's uh, mum or dad. Uh, overall, adult six, Charlie got 17. So although the adults won the final round, Charlie did win overall in the Wales house. Well done, Charlie. Good result there. Children got 23 out of 30 in the Bullock family, and the adults got 12 out of 30. It's because we didn't go to the PAL school. That's what they're claiming, Mr. McBean. That could be true. That could, could well be true. There's some super still, the children, The children here did very well. They're, they're a bit older than the children, <laughs> a little bit older. But they actually got them all right. 30. Oh, pretty well, impressive. The children in the McBean house um, there. They got 20, I think. I, I think that says 20, oh, uh, which is pretty um, good. Fantastic. Well, very good. Overall, Holly got, Holly got 29 and the adults got 12. Interested to know, Holly, which question you didn't get because that's pretty good getting 29. Yeah, very good. Um, Imogen says it is me, but my adults told me to write it. <laughs> uh, children got 30 out of 30 in the Stentiford's house. Well, well done. done. Super teamwork there. I assume that means you beat your adults um, following the previous scores for the other rounds. Um, well done. It's wonderful to see you all quizzing. Um, we'll, we, we will be back. I believe there's one, I believe off the top of my head, there's a quiz next week, Mr. McLean, but not the week after, because the week after next week, we've got our music, we've got our music concert for the E Day. So that's just two weeks today. Um, I haven't course. got it in my diary, that quiz, Mr. Sprackler, but I have got the virtual disco the day after. That. Ah, that's why. So there's no quiz next week because there's a virtual disco next week. So no quiz next week, virtual disco next week. The week after, I think, off the top of my head, is the V-Day. And the week after that, that we'll be back with the quiz. With the quiz. Yeah, that's what we've got. A few more people coming in. Um, we've got overall, the kids got 24. Mummy got 10. Um, in the Baker household, oh, Holly, it was the painting of Mona Lisa that got Holly caught out, Mr. McBain. That's She's got 29, one. but that is a That's tricky one. Very impressive. I bet you'll know that answer moving forward, though, Holly. Uh, well done. Brilliant quiz. Really enjoyed it, say the Devils. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We really enjoyed it, says Mrs. Howell. The Devils are saying thank you. Um, the Mystery Dyers are saying bye bye, everyone, from the Mystery Dyers. I think that's our cue to say goodbye, Mr. McBean. Thank you, Mr. McBean. Bye-bye, everyone. It's been wonderful to have another community Thank quiz. You. Thank you to our quiz master for putting all the questions together. He's done a great job. And we will be back tomorrow morning. Remember, we've got two recorded shows tomorrow. Um, half past nine, Good Morning Power is a pre-recorded show. And 20 past 11, we've got a pre-recorded assembly. I will be back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock for Today at Power. I wish everyone a wonderful evening. Please, everyone, love the quiz. Um, thank you for all the thank yous, and we will see you very, very soon. Take care now.